Hey guys, um, so I've had a lot of requests for a tutorial on my four part eye candy stencil. I've also had a lot of requests for just a layered stencil in general and also something with white. So this one is perfect because it hits all the marks. So first of all, let's talk about layered stencils for one second. Um, all of my designs have, first of all, they have the markings on them so that you can line up the next layer, which we'll get to when we get to the second layer. Um, they also all have the name of the stencil and the part. So in this case, part one, two, three, four. If you have one of my older ones, um, there was a time when I didn't have that on it. So it's possible yours doesn't have a mark on it, but anything that's come out in like the last year will have those labeled on it. And I try to mark those in the order that makes the most sense to use them. So you obviously don't have to do them in that order, but if you have a layered set and you're kind of at a loss for where to start, that's a good starting point. So we're gonna start with one, one being the actual eyeballs themselves since that's white and needs to be in the background. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna use our Stencil Genie. This particular cookie is very thick. So I'm gonna use my, uh, where is it? Frame C. Um, I actually don't have these up on the website yet. This is your regular Stencil Genie comes with two sides, a short and a tall, please ignore the <laughs> paint on my hands. A short and a tall, uh, depending on how thick your cookie is. Um, and then there's also an optional side three, which we have and will be listed on the website shortly. So we're gonna use the third side just because these are really thick cookies. So we're gonna go ahead and put it in there. Now, in terms of where I'm gonna put this, first of all, okay, let me just say, always, always, always make sure your stencil is right side up. Every company, myself and every other stencil company that I have seen, cookie stencils at least, have some kind of tab or logo or something in sometimes they're centered sometimes they're on the right but there's always something along the top edge and that'll help you remember which side is up because a lot of people don't really pay attention and then i get a lot of struggles with lining stencils up so if you're not paying attention and you put the first layer down like this and then you go to do the next layer and it's right side up you're going to be spending all this time trying to figure out where your pattern goes so just always always pay attention that your stencil's right set up and you'll never have any question. Now, also, I am just gonna put this pretty much dead center. Um, occasionally, you will have a pattern or design where you want a really specific part of the pattern somewhere, but most of the time, that's not the case. So, unless you have something like that, just put it pretty much in the center because if you put it, you know, like this, you're gonna have to remember every single time when you go to do that layer that you put it exactly like that. So, I'm just gonna do it center. We're gonna start with white for the eyes. I'm using my Air Genie, and we're gonna be starting with my white airbrush color. This is Killer Zebra's brand. And I get a lot of questions about what gun to use for metallics and for white, because they're thicker. Genie does have a pink tail gun. This is not it, this is her regular gun. I only ever use this gun. I honestly never even pull out my other one. I don't find that this one clogs ever with any of my colors. I don't even know if I've ever used my pink tail gun because I've never felt the need for it. That's literally the extent to which I just don't bother. So we're just gonna use the regular gun with white, shake it up really well. And I do mean really well, especially if it's been sitting on the shelf for a while. All right. I'm gonna put a little in there and then I always test it on a paper towel first sometimes we clean it out and it's not perfect and then we go to airbrush something and you have a little remnant of color from the last time you airbrushed. Okay, <clears throat> so gun straight up and down. I'm only barely going to be pulling the trigger back. I have my knob turned all the way up. Here, let me show you guys this. Okay, this knob here. I get asked about this a lot. A lot of people are told to do low and slow, so turn this all the way down. This is not determining how much color is coming out of your airbrush. That is determining how much pressure is behind that color. 
So in this case, if you turn it up, you're gonna get a finer mist. None of the cookie uh, airbrushes available are strong enough that if you turn them all the way up, it will give you a problem. So just turn it all the way up and you will always have a finer mist. So we have it turned all the way up. Airbrush is gonna be straight up and down. We never airbrush at an angle, or at least not a stencil. We don't do stencils at an angle because that's just gonna push the color underneath the stencil. So straight up and down. I'm actually gonna get kind of close just because if you pull it way back, I could pull it way back and then just do kind of all over. But what that's gonna result in is just a whole bunch of mist everywhere. That's how your kitchen gets coated. So I'm gonna get kind of close and just do the areas that I need. Along the edge here, I can see that it's kind of lifted. So I'm gonna use this to just press it down right there. And we're just doing a really thin coat, okay? We want this to be pretty much opaque white, but we don't want to try to do that in the first pass. Because if you do, you're just going to make a mess. So I'm just kind of going section by section, making sure I've gotten everything. And I'm really just giving it a nice light, nice light coating. White is really meant to be built up. And you can continue to layer white as much as you want until it's as opaque as you need it. All right, so it dries fairly quickly. Uh, my airbrush colors are all water-based and they don't have any sugar in them, so they do dry a little bit quicker than some of the other ones. Um, but honestly, it's dry enough. I don't know how well this comes through on video because it's white, but it's dry enough. I can start back in this corner again. So, holding it down when I hit a spot where the stencil is raised up a little bit is really important because not all floods are going to be perfect. Sometimes we end up with a divot somewhere. Sometimes it's a little thicker on one side. But anytime that stencil is not actually touching the cookie, you're much more likely to have that underspray. Alright, so that's two coats in. And I can see that it's looking white, but it still looks pretty lavender to me. So I'm going to keep going. <coughs> And the more layers you do, the longer it's going to take to dry. So I can do a third layer now, but if I decide I want a fourth layer, I might give it just a minute. So now, if you're doing a lot of cookies, you would do this and then you would just move it to the side and it would have time to dry in between. I get a lot of people asking me about drying time and how long until you do the next layer. You don't want to do the next layer. Oops, I just shifted it. Uh, you don't want to do the next layer until the first layer is totally dry. Look at that, I'm shifting it again. See, that's the thing with these really tall cookies, is that even though I'm using the taller side of the stencil genie, it's still kind of floating above, like the actual stencil genie's not touching the counter, which means that it does shift kind of easily. All right, I'm gonna let that dry a second and I might do one more coat just so you guys can see how it gets really opaque. Okay, so when you lift it off, you don't wanna just pick it straight up. You wanna press down on one side and tilt it off. That way you don't risk smudging it. So we're gonna press it down we're just gonna tilt it off like that. All right, so there's layer one. We're gonna let that dry for a minute because white, especially if you try and do the next layer where the plastic touches the white, if it's not totally dry, it'll just sort of lift off and then it'll just be left with, actually I can show you because I did one of these and kind of, I started doing one of these and I tried to hurry it. You can, you can kind of see right there it's like a hole, and there's like a spot right there. Cause you know, 
even though I know the rules, we all still try and <laughs> break them sometimes. And it doesn't work out. So we're gonna let this dry for a minute and then we're gonna move on to the next While one. While that's drying, I'm gonna move on and start cleaning my airbrush gun. I'm really only using one gun for this, which is what I do most of the time, unless I'm airbrushing multiple colors at the same time on the same layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this out of the way so it doesn't get splattered when you're moving your cookies. So if you're doing a whole bunch of these and you're doing this layer and then you need to move it to do that layer on another cookie, always make sure, again, just like with the first layer, don't turn it. So don't pick it up like this and then put it down like that on your cookie sheet because you'll start to lose track of where you designed it. So we're gonna pick it up and we're gonna keep it exactly upright. So when I'm airbrushing, I just have a cup. I dump whatever's left. This is just a, a water bottle, a spray bottle with water in it. This is my quick clean. And then I'm actually not gonna clean it that well because we're probably gonna put some water in the next, or some water. We're probably gonna put some white in the next one. But I do wanna have the excess out because I don't wanna start out with a bunch of white. So there you go. Now we'll wait for it to dry. You can lighten up color. One would be to add water. That's actually my favorite way to lighten the color because it just dilutes it and makes it a little bit paler. But in this case, we're gonna use a little bit of white because we want, um, because we're gonna be airbrushing on top of white, I find that it sits better on, when you layer on top of white if there's a little bit of white in the mixture, even if it's just a drop. So we're gonna, Add some purple, just did two drops. And I always mix my colors directly in the cup. Oh, hold on, I did not shake this. I always shake it up. It's worth it just to give it a quick shake every time. If it's been sitting for more than a minute. All right, so to mix it, I'm gonna turn on the airbrush. I'm gonna put my finger over the end. And I'm just gonna pull back the trigger a little bit and see it mixes really nicely. Okay, we're gonna test out that color. That's pretty good purple. Okay, always test the color on a paper towel first, just to make sure it's exactly what I want. Here's the cookie, still upright, making sure it's in the same position. We've got layer two in our stencil genie. Again, still upright. Now, we've got these markings. Right now, we're lining up with layer one, which is the eyeballs. So I am really just gonna be looking at these big circles for now. So the first thing to do, we know we put it pretty much just center. So I'm just gonna put it down in the center. And then I'm gonna find a spot, usually in one corner. So we're gonna start in this corner. I see that eyeball, I don't know how well, just because we use, we're lining up white. It's very obvious in person. I just don't know lighting wise if it comes across in the video, but hopefully it does. So we're gonna line up that eyeball, The the outside line with there with the white so once that's lined up I'm gonna to come to the opposite corner and I can see it's pretty close but it needs a small adjustment and then I'm gonna to come to another corner that looks pretty good so it all looks pretty good now if you have a pattern in this case it's lining up do you see this candy right here where it stripes it's the whatever color I airbrush now is gonna be lining up with that. So we wanna make sure there's no white poking out. Cause if there is, then you know it's not lined up quite right. Okay. And just tiny adjustments. A lot of people do a lot of big movements. And you don't need to do that. It's like when you're driving and you're keeping yourself straight. You don't go like this all over the place, you know, like they do in movies to keep yourself on the road. It's really just tiny adjustments. So just tiny adjustments to get exactly where you need it. All right, so again, straight up and down with the airbrush, and I'm just doing a light coat. Always, doesn't matter what color it is, always light coats, because you can always come back and make it darker. But to get a dark color, you really want to layer that color, because if you spray too much at once, you're going to end up with beading on the stencil, which can run off and the actual color on your cookie is gonna be splotchy. So just nice light coats. And again, I'm just doing a section at a time. 
if this pattern was much more open, I would be pulling back and kind of doing all over the whole thing. But since it's just a bunch of small sections like this, I'll just do one section at a time. It saves you airbrush color too. And you just kind of work your way methodically across so you don't miss anything. So I'm gonna give it another coat because that does not look opaque enough to my liking. Now we could have done this a darker purple, but since we're gonna be layering, this is the iris, iris, right? I'm not very good with my eye <laughs> part of This is the iris, and we're gonna be layering the pupil on top in black at the end. So we don't wanna to go too dark on this color or there won't be enough contrast at the end to make the pupil really pop. So if you can kind of tell, the spots where I was airbrushing directly on the cookie, uh, well, okay, where it was directly on the icing and not on top of where we had already airbrushed white, they're a little darker. The spots that were white are a little bit lighter and that's okay because we have that white in here it's going to help it sort of sit on top. So if we want that darker, we could go over those spots again. But honestly, I think it's plenty dark enough. So I'm going to do a quick check, make sure I didn't miss anything. This spot in the corner that... Whoops. And there you go. I just totally shifted it. That's all right. Okay. Pressing down on the edge. We're going to tilt it off. Luckily, I didn't smear anything. All right. It's looking good. So... We're gonna need to give this a minute to dry. So I'm gonna move this out of the way while we clean our gun. Now this time I'm gonna be a little bit more thorough in cleaning just because we're gonna be doing a completely separate color from purple. So dump any excess in there. Just gonna kind of spray it till it runs empty. I just spray the cup until the water starts to run clear. Now, if you do this in a cup, don't point it straight down and pull the trigger because you're going to be spraying it directly at all the liquid in the bottom and it's going to splash back in your face, making a huge mess. It's possible I learned that from experience. So again, just putting my finger over the tip, the way we mix the colors, the way it bubbles back. And this is really how you would clean your airbrush at any time. Just, I'd be a little bit more thorough after I'm done. Okay. Our third layer, I think we're gonna do yellow. Same thing as before. I'm gonna put a couple drops in and then we're gonna add the white, partly to lighten it up, because I kinda want a pale yellow. And also partly because it'll help it sit on top of that, those white eyeballs. it right there in the cup. I get a lot of questions about that when I do that in my videos. Honestly, it's just so much easier. And if you're doing a specific mix, like trying to achieve a certain shade, when you put it in, just remember two drops yellow, five drops white or whatever. That way, if you need to mix it again, then you'll be good. Okay, so that color looks good. All right, so again, we're just gonna put it pretty much in the center. We're gonna line up those circles for the eyeballs again. So, tiny adjustments. Now we also have the purple. So you can see up here, wanna make sure, like if it was off like that and there's those purple stripes sticking out, that's how you know it's not in the right spot. So just small adjustments. Like I said, do one corner, then go check the opposite corner and just keep doing that until you're happy. The more, because we have two layers down now, I have more points to use to make sure it's right. But that looks pretty good to me. All right, so same thing as before. We're just gonna work our way across, making sure your airbrush is straight up and down. See now here, in these areas where I'm not layering it on top of the uh, white eyeballs, the fact that we mix the white in here is also gonna make that yellow stand out instead of fade into that purple background. So you'll get a nice yellow instead of kind of a darker muddy yellow. Just 
just shifted it. It's easy when you have these tall cookies where it's kind of floating. It's easy to accidentally. Okay, so it looks pretty good. It did shift a little bit, so I'm gonna make sure it's where it needs to be. So I'm gonna go over it again. I want that yellow to really stand out, especially on the areas where the background is purple. So I'm gonna give it once more over everything. All right, looks pretty good. So, all right, so remember, we're gonna just press down and tilt off. The last layer we have here is going to be the pupils, and we've got some the swirls on the lollipops. And these other lollipop tops. So we're going to do black for this one. And again, like before, I'm going to put some white in. I'm just going to put a single drop of white. That's all it takes. So we're going to put some black. And then I'm going to put just one drop of white. Okay. I'm just going to do a single drop of white. It'll help it sit on top of some of those white layers. It'll also give it a slightly more opaque look, which helps because every other layer has had that, so it'll make them all be a little bit more continuity. All right, so again, we're just gonna sit it down. You can see there's a little bit of staining from previous uses, and that's okay, because, you know, this is real life. So I'm gonna use that same eyeball as before, I'm going to line that up, come across, come up here, checking, and come check down here. And I think everything looks pretty good. All right, so again, straight up and down. And with black, even if we want it really dark. We're going to come back and do another layer. We never want to get, try and get it dark in one pass. And you guys, I am barely pulling the trigger here. I get pretty close when I'm doing this so that I, my spray is directed on just that area. And I am barely touching the trigger. I think we got everything once. Can't tell if that has cookie in or anything. We'll do that just in case. All right, so I'm gonna start back at the beginning. I'm gonna do a second coat. Oh, looks like I did miss that spot. Oh, you can hear Nora whispering they are missing one in the middle. Concentrating on what I'm doing. I totally missed that. Thank you, Nora. Oh, look at that. I missed that one too. I missed a whole bunch. And there's another one. Oh, I must not be paying attention at all this time around. Okay. Some of those ones I missed the first time. Let's give a second layer. Oh, look at that. I missed that all too. I do not normally miss so many spots. Oh, did I miss that one too? That one? What did I miss? Did I miss another one? Oh, there's nothing there. Nora's my helper today. Alright, I'm just going to do a quick once over everything because apparently I am barely paying attention this time. Did I miss anything? There's nothing there to airbrush. There is. <laughs> There's not. That's plastic. I'll airbrush it if it makes you feel better. Is that good? Okay. <laughs> okay, so we're going to tilt it off. And there we go. Oh, look at that. I did not get that very well. We can go back and fix that after this dries. 
sounds very good, Mom. Thank you. All right. Is that the last layer? Yep, that's the last layer. Wow. Does that look more... Does that look more similar? I don't know what that means. Similar? Like, more of the same? Maybe. Um, all right, so here's some different color combos, and here it is done on white. This is just my, my sweet sketch practice cookie. Um, so these ones, I just use our stone gray, and I thinned it out with a little bit of water just to make it paler. And for the candy sections and the lollipop sticks, I just airbrushed it. For the eyes, I just barely did the outside edges. Um, so you'd have that shading, but the center doesn't really have anything. If I was to do it again, I might do it in the ivory instead of the gray. But still, that gives you kind of an idea. And I would even probably lighten a little bit more because that was just my first go at it. But that's another reason why I like these practice cookies because you can just test out an idea without having to waste a cookie. So there you go. Let me know if you guys have any questions or what you guys want to see next.